let's go to uh, Logan in South Dakota, who's also been holding for a while. Logan. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. You're live. Go ahead. Okay. I am 18 years old, and I voted for my first time in this election for Donald Trump. Good. And my question is, what can the average person do that to help make a difference other than just staying informed through InfoWars? Well, I, that's Join a good question. Government. I think you can make your own videos wherever you're at. You're in South mm -hmm. Dakota. So start a yeah. business. Yeah. Start a business, <laughs> employ people, um, look, look out for what's going on level. in your community and inform others yeah. about what's going on in your community. Yeah. Because sometimes people are so busy in their lives. You're 18 years old. So you probably, I would say you have a little more time than somebody who's got three or four kids and working a full-time job and married and all that. So you, are you married and have kids? <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, okay. No. So you probably have a lot, a, a little bit more uh, free time on your hands. And I would say use that free time to uh, educate others and whatever, you know, join, start a second amendment club, bring people out and go shooting. And, and, and you know, I would say, uh, just don't be afraid, you know, don't be afraid to speak your mind. I, even yeah. though it may seem like there's a lot of people around you that are going to hate you for your opinion, or you think they're going to look down on you because you're a conservative or a Trump supporter or whatever. You know what? Fine. You're 18 years old. You probably don't need them in your life anyway. You got plenty of time to make real friends. And what you'll see is people will gravitate towards you. You'll meet like-minded people and you'll actually end up being an inspiration to others. So just don't be afraid to, to share your thoughts and opinion, despite all the bullying that's going on in the yeah. left. And don't think that your videos or your articles or anything have to be perfect before you put them out. I think a lot of people are so afraid that they're, they don't have the production value or whatever, the know-how. No, that does not matter at all. You just got to get out there and make a difference. And it definitely starts within your local community, because that's where you have the most access to what's going on and you can make the most impact. I would echo that. Think, uh, act locally. We've heard the globalists mm -hmm. say for the longest time, think globally, act locally. And mm -hmm. that's what we can't do. That's what the national media can't do. We can't focus on all of the individual things that are happening in your community, your eyes on the ground. So if you see something's happening in your community, you can bring that to national attention or at least to the attention of the people in your community. Focus on things that are local and focus on liberty. Don't ever let anybody sell you the bill of goods that you can trade your liberty for security. You'll never get it. That's You'll just true. become a slave. So yep. put liberty first and then focus on what's happening in your community locally. Report on that. Educate people there about that and maybe even act on that. You know, exercise your liberty in that area. So uh, do it Do it locally. Now, Logan, you thought there was no more homework once you got out of high school. We just gave you a ton <laughs> of homework there. So we expect you to definitely do something and, you know, keep us appraised of your, of your activities, of course. Uh, we love hearing make from the young people out there who are really trying to make a difference. We saw a young man in D.C. Who, who had visited us on some of these live shoots through Skype. Uh, John Christopher Collins, and just seeing him out there with his whole family. And I, I talked to his mom at one point, and I said, does, does John Christopher run the conversations at your dinner table? And she goes, oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> and she goes, and we love him for it. And, and here's a man who's not, he's in a wheelchair, but he's not letting that stop him for what he wants to do. And he's out there making videos. He doesn't have the greatest viewing numbers in the world, but he's out there doing it. And someday he's going to run because his mind is open and in the right spot. He's going to see something one day that is going to be national news. He is going to right. put himself out there in that, in that system because his mind is awake. And so it, exactly. you have to wake yourself up and wake up others. Right. And that's exactly, you make a great point there because it was just a, just an average person who was out there with his cell phone, who just so happened to be there at that moment when Hillary Clinton collapsed at the 9-11 memorial. It was actually a Hillary All Clinton the other press was not it there. It was just an average white male that was there when Age <laughs> Skrillex started screaming at him. Exactly. You know? So I don't know. He just got out there and was in, were in these people's faces challenging uh, their point of view. And that's it. I mean, they have planned so many of these rallies, at least until 2018, that yeah. they're planning. So... Our side, our team needs to make sure we well, the have ACLU people announced, showing up to get the out ACLU there. The ACLU announced four years. They're not stopping. Four yeah. years. That's four their agenda. Years. So you need to make sure that you show up at those rallies as well. And then you send in the postcards and then you say thank you guys for or that you call your elected representatives or you show up to city council. Yeah, that's and very spread true. Spread the link to this show. It's a free link. Infowars.com forward slash show. Spread that link far and wide. Thanks for calling Logan. Hope to hear from you in the future. Let's go to Bob in San Francisco wants to talk about the Anderson Dam and illegal aliens. Go ahead, Bob. Hello. Hey, Bob. Um, You're live. Great. 
I just want to thank you all for having this forum here to reach out to some viewers here that uh, I'm actually a pretty new viewer, but uh, an old soul in terms of your views. Uh, I'm living in the middle of uh, Silicon Valley with Governor Moonbeam, and we've got a dam that's about ready to collapse when the snow melt goes. We've got illegal aliens uh, taking jobs that they say nobody takes that they're not taking. I'm a local contractor here in the Bay Area, and uh, it's pretty hard to uh, compete when you got a person that will work for nothing. And, uh, you know, basically, I just, uh, I'm glad that Donald Trump is president, but um, Alex Jones was stating that we've got a whole lot more to do in mm -hmm. terms of now that uh, we're all, you know, uh, involved in, in our local governments. It's it's a pretty exciting time to uh, be an American, but but we are we are in a war, and and I do agree with that. Yeah, we definitely are in an information war. And if you see us, you know, make a joke or kind of make light of something, it, it's because you know probably gallows humor humor because we're looking at a lot of bad news out there. But also, I see a lot of good news. I see the fact that this news is getting out there, and we don't have to go, hey guys, the NSA is spying on you. Hey guys, the CIA is spying on you through your TV or through your smartphone. Now that's common knowledge. And that wasn't common knowledge five years ago. Even though you had Stephen Colbert working with Michael Hayden and trying to pour cold water on this idea that they're using appliances and the Internet of Things to spy on people, their smart homes, and all that kind of stuff. You had an article that came out at the same time on Realtor.com mm -hmm. talking about how your smart home is spying on you. Here's what you can do about it. I mean, that is not <laughs> a center of of high tech <laughs> information. Uh, they're not a political center. It's an established Fact. They can't hide from uh, what's been revealed with the Snowden docs, what's been revealed by the uh, Vault 7 docs. We understand that this is happening, and no matter how much they try to do this, they continue to lose credibility. That's why they have to turn to comedians to do this, uh, because uh, everybody is laughing at their serious news. So they think that people are laughing along with them. No, we're still laughing at you, Stephen Colbert, for being so ignorant and dense and thinking that we're stupid and we don't understand what's going on. And I, I just, I found this uh, quick search, quake fears force massive water release from Anderson Dam. So that, that's another thing in California, you have these quake lines going on with the San Andreas fault and other, other fault lines. Let me go back to the, uh, there's the headline of it, but that this also pertains to nuclear reactors too that are in California, some of which are right on fault lines. Uh, I think there's one. Yeah, isn't there one called the Diablo or the something? Diablo. Yeah. And, and, the, and the fault Probably line is Canada. right offshore, yeah. uh, just less than a quarter of a mile from the actual uh, power plant. Well, you know, Bob, as you were talking about, I'm sorry, Bob in San Francisco is talking about how he's trying to compete with people who have an unfair cost advantage because they're uh, willing to work at a lower wage base. They're willing to work without paying social security wages and other things like that, that makes it cheaper for the people who employ them. It makes it, gives them a wage advantage over American workers. And yet you have Governor Brown there in California who could care less, of, couldn't care less about that. And instead he is focused on, on helping those people while the infrastructure is crumbling. That's a, 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 an amazing contrast. And you hit the nail on the head when you brought those two issues up. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's really, it, it's funny because you've got, you know, the illegal immigration, uh, basically, with the sanctuary cities and all the governors stating that they're not, you know, going to enforce the federal laws, it's, it, it's so frustrating. You know, they'll have a march. They'll, they'll, they'll show up at the city council. Uh, they'll, you know, half of them are illegal. I mean, yes. they can't even speak English, for heaven's sakes. Yeah, and but yet they're wanting to, you know, uh, make law, local law here in our in our in our in our in our cities. It's just really frustrating because I want everybody to have their fair shake at the American dream, but I want it to be fair and legal, and I want it to be right. You well, know, you know, Americans want, you have know, dreams as well, and these sanctuary cities they want to put the dreams of people who want to come here. Uh, governments who want to send their citizens here, like Mex the Mexican government with its 50-plus uh, consulates and embassies throughout the United States, uh, saying that they're going to help Mexican citizens 
avoid deportation and violate mm -hmm. our laws. They're mm -hmm. foreign citizens who are here criminally trespassing and getting free education because their government doesn't want to pay for it. That needs to stop. We need to put the interests of American citizens first, and Mexico needs to take care of their citizens, and Guatemala take care of their citizens. And I think it's very important. I think if we look at these sanctuary cities, one of the things that we have right now is a great opportunity for Donald Trump and the federal government to wean these welfare people at the sanctuary cities off of the federal tip. Okay, What they need to do is say, we're going to cut your services and you guys can start supporting yourself if you don't want to be a part of the American system here and you don't want to follow our laws, we'll just cut off uh, the money to you. That's one of the places where he could save a lot of money and he needs to start doing it right now because typically it's these sanctuary cities that are, have the biggest welfare programs like in California and New York, other places, Democrat areas. And speaking of sanctuary cities in Austin, we had our own sheriff, I believe her name is Sally Hernandez. Uh, she was mandating yeah. that we release criminals unless they are murderers or armed robbers. She and had was, three crimes. That she right. Would, she oh, would what was the over. third one? What was the third one? Um, I, I can't remember. But one of the crimes that, that came up was child molesting. You had this guy who was a serial yeah. child molester. And she said, and oh, they I him. forgot about that one. And they caught him and had one guy in <laughs> jail. And they're like, we're not going to hold him for ice. He paid down. Yeah. We're going to let him go. Yeah. A child molester. Right. What if yeah, somebody I, is I a serial like drunk driver that has uh, injured people and is likely to kill somebody? She's not going to turn them over to ICE for deportation. They can be, these foreign citizens can re continue to criminally trespass here in America. And we have people like uh, Hernandez that's not yeah. going to send go, them over. Go ahead, yeah. Bob. Yeah. yeah, I just recently got it in. Uh, I live on a busy street, and a drunk driver hit my uh, vehicle uh, and uh, was in my um, easement in my driveway. At about two o'clock in the morning, I go out there and the guy's drunk. He's in the driveway. My van's all tore up, and the, I overhear the police saying, "Yeah, he's an illegal. He doesn't understand. He, I can't. He doesn't speak English. Oh, he doesn't yeah, have a life. Don't they don't understand yeah. our laws, so they don't have to obey them. Yeah, so you have, you have suffer. these things called translators, but uh, you yeah. know, you privileged American, you better we've suffer. Had, you and my family, we've had two incidents. One of them happened to me. One of them happened to my son. Rear-ended by people who don't even speak English, who are dead drunk like that. And the police come up and say, eh, it's exactly the same thing. Give them a special pass because they're here criminally trespassing in our country from another country. But they know <laughs> from the higher up that they're limited to what they're going to be able to do. So they stop sure. way early on yes. doing yeah. it. Well, that's a lot of they paperwork. They're not exactly. proactive. Exactly. Yeah. It's not at, at necessarily at the grassroots level. Yeah, exactly. Today we call it bone broth, and for thousands of years our ancestors enjoyed its benefits before it became lost to our modern diets of processed junk. We are now introducing Caveman by InfoWarsLife.com, the ultimate in true paleo nutrition with bone broth, turmeric root, chaga mushroom, and seven total primal superfoods in a single great tasting formula. Caveman. It's those people living in the wilds having to actually build civilization that are our superior ancestors. And we need to do everything we can to recapture that. Everyone knew that you used all the parts of the animal. You used the meat for sustenance, the fat for cooking, but you used the bones for strength. From the outside structure full of minerals and key cofactors to the marrow that produces the blood for the body, this is the engine of the life essence. I'm a long way from the caveman my ancestors were, but I'm sure as hell trying to get back to that essence that made us what we were, and this is a big part of it. I know you're going to want to check out Caveman Ultimate Paleo Formula for yourself at InfoWarsLife.com today.